Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually today with an awesome tutorial. I just saw what Kim's working on, and it's something you've asked for for a long, long, long time. So this is going to be very exciting. So if you've never been here before, say hi. Say where you're from. We have a show today. And also, I know you're going to ask, the show on Tuesday got popped over to tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be on again at 2 p.m. So just put that in the notes. All right, so uh, Kim is ready for us. I'm going to bring her up here. Hi, Kim. Hi, Angela. How's it going? Very good, very good. So for those that have never, ever, ever met you, Kim is a fabulous brother educator. Do you want to say something about yourself? Um, well, I live in Amherst, Ohio. That's right on the shore of Lake Erie, in between the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland and Cedar Point, the roller coaster capital of the world. So we're rocking on one side, rolling on the other side. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. By the way, that quilt behind you is gorgeous. Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. So let me just bring your name up here for those that have never met you before. Now, this is one of the um, really, really broken dishes quilts that I was teaching for a long time. I have a lot of inside out broken quilts. Um, I don't do them too much anymore. So I have like a bedroom full of quilts. Um, so it's kind of nice to get to pull them out once in a That's while. That's awesome. You could, if you would like, you know, this quilty thing is pretty hot. It's going to be a big trend this year. You can send me some and I'll make some outfits out of them. How's that? Oh, that's a thought, actually. <laughs> there you go. Well, Kim, I was actually I, thinking no, I, of a pulse, I was thinking of upholstering them onto um, like chairs, do oh, some things yeah. with upholstery and, and redo some chairs like that. So that would be really cool. I'll send you my chairs then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Kim, you're going to be showing us a technique that so many people have asked for. Uh, we kind of glimpsed at it a little bit through this whole last year of live shows uh, from you and from some of the others, but nobody has taught the technique of how to design their own chenille. And I can hardly wait for this. Okay. So speaking of garments, um, I I've never been a big chenille fan. It was like, it just didn't occur to me to love chenille. And then I was assigned a chenille project, actually. <laughs> and I thought, okay, so now it's time to learn chenille. So I started playing with it. And the more I did it, the more I liked it. And the more possibilities came up. So I haven't really had time to do everything that I want to do with it. But I'm going to show you a few of the things um, that I started to do. This is so, going to be very exciting. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. Are you ready, Angela? <laughs> I'm ready. Take it away, Kim. Okay. So the first thing I did was I had to learn how to chenille. So I wasn't sure about how to layer fabrics and how to even purchase fabrics. So you can do this with a regular woven fabric, like plaids that are woven and do several layers of that. It's real stringy and really, really pretty. Um, the first thing I did though, can you see this? Um, oh, I got, that's beautiful. Isn't this pretty? So this was just fabric that I wanted to do. I wanted to actually do garments, like jackets. So I pulled out some of my quilters cotton, and I just have, I think, three layers of turquoise, robin's egg blue, and then um, a lime green. And I added, I don't think you can really see it real well on camera, but I added a layer of um, lame. I wanted to see if it would sparkle you know, through. So when you're doing um, chenille, you have to always remember that it's going to fray on the bias. So I laid my fabric out with the straight this way and this way. And then I'll show you with my ruler, I drew lines across at a 45 degree angle. And then when you sew those and cut them apart, then they really fray beautifully. So I I realized this is not how I expected it to come out. And I thought there must be some trick to layering, you know, your fabrics and getting them in the right order. So the next project, I was using this fabric. This, this is flannel actually. And I love using the flannel. Only downside is it's really heavy when you wash it. Um, but this flannel has a print on it. So I pulled my other colors from the print. And what you have to watch for, there's a lot of beautiful flannels available in the fabric stores. Um, but when you're doing chenille, you have to also look at the backside. 
so depending on where you place this fabric in the rotation, if it's only printed on one side or the other, then you have the chance of this is the only thing that's going to show that back. So um, here are a few things that I did using that. So these are all the same fabrics. This is here's the regular fabric, and then I layered it with yellow, purple, and orange. So that that's is, that's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just watching this going, okay, look at how the original fabric is and look at how it turns out. I mean, it's a totally different look. It is. And and this one has yellow as the top layer. And the printed fabric is the back layer that doesn't get cut, but it does still show through a little bit. And then this layer, I have the printed fabric again on the bottom, and I just reverse the order of the layers of fabric. So again, very different look. Here's yet another look. Whoops. These are all the same four fabrics. That's unbelievable. In fact, for those that are watching, when she shows you how to do this, imagine the same pieces of fabric set out differently. Those look like four completely different fabrics and they look like very expensive fabrics, by the way. They do. And it's cheap because I used a coupon. I think it was three something a yard. <laughs> um, That's cheap. It is. Well, you need a lot of it. So it's good that it's cheap. So I think this was the one I ended up going with. So I would recommend always doing a test run to see because you don't know how the colors are going to look, you know, when you're when you're done layering them up. So so that was one project. Um, I actually have the finished uh, project of this to show to show you. So this was three layers. And this oh, was the um, this was all the colors. It looks like water. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. So this is um, three different shades of aqua turquoise. And then I added a lime green and it's just got a like a white. Can you see the white background showing through? So these are all versions of the same thing. Unbelievable. So then, oh, here's another one. So see how different they are. And all I did was reverse the order that I stacked them. Okay, then I thought, well, that's that's fun. But what about if we change direction? Oh, oh, I love that. <laughs> so now it looks like it's pieced a little bit. So oh my gosh. this is just, again, 45 degree angles. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. And then I got really crazy. And I said, I wonder if we could add polka dots to this. So this, these are the same fabrics, but in between the layers, I just added a flannel polka dot and stacked up those flannel polka dots in exactly the same place. So when I cut them open, the black polka dots show. Oh, that's amazing. Now I would have never thought of adding that. I mean, I also wouldn't have thought of the different directions. <laughs> you got me on two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this has been really just so fun and I, I didn't think I was going to become addicted to it, but, um, you'll see in a minute sort of what's happened. I, I have a few little, um, clutch bag samples that I've also embroidered on first and then chenille it. And there's like a zipper clutch. I don't have those here to show you, but, um, it's, it's just been so much fun. I just love doing the chenille. So I'm going to show you the fabrics that I'm going to kind of demonstrate on. There's like a peach, a turquoise, a black, a yellow, and an orange. And then the background is black. So I have a jacket just about ready to go in the washer, which I'll show you in a minute. But I always start out with my stack of fabric and then I do my, my test swatches. I actually thought I was going to want the yellow on top. I wanted it to be kind of bright, but when I saw it, it just didn't, it just didn't strike me. So I did a couple of other ones. I thought maybe the pink on top, but it looked kind of bland. And then let's see. Then I did the orange on top. I thought that might be a little bit better. Oh, 
We're getting there. I like all of them. I actually like the pink too. Did you? Mm hmm I did. Okay. Well, I'm a pink, I'm a pink fan. Well, then I ended up with this one. I like the way the turquoise showed through on this one. Oh, yeah. I would so say this, that's my favorite. So this one, the turquoise is the top layer. And I didn't anticipate that. I just never would have put the turquoise on top. First of all, it was more difficult to mark because it's darker. But I did like that the best, and I'm glad I did my test. Um, so just so you can see better, I'm going to go ahead and put the orange on top. So I have my fabrics all layered up here. Okay. The backing is much larger. And you'll see why this is important later. But you want the back to be larger than your layers. And again, I know that this is my straight grain right here. So I have to do my lines going this way. When I'm doing the large garment, I lay it out on this on this um, tabletop and I actually take a ruler and I draw my straight, my straight grain line. And then th that's going to go away. I use these marking pens that, you know, when you wash them or you apply heat to them, then all the lines go away anyway. You can't see them. But then you have something to mark off of. So I will mark my 90, my, um, my grain line. So Kim, while you're marking that, just a quick question for you, a couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, are those cotton fabrics or flannel fabrics? These are cotton flannel. Cotton flannel. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> now, you know. gonna, now I'm going to look at my ruler. There's my 45. I'm going to lay that on the grain line. And I'm going to start drawing lines across. And then I'm going to move it over a half inch and draw the next line and the next line. This pencil, <laughs> this pencil doesn't want to go. I'm reading the comments. Kelly says, hey, this is in my budget. There's a big sale for Memorial Day. <laughs> yes, there is. Friends and family, I think, right? Okay, so now you're going to, can you see those lines at all? Yeah, we can see them great. Okay. So this line is just for reference. You don't care about that line anymore. So you're going to start making lines. And then if you want to change direction, you just lay the ruler across this way and, and just go in the other direction. You see that? Yep, we can see that. Wonderful. So you... For those that are, hold that up just for a second. For those that are uh, watching this, I see a lot of uh, just people people saying that they're following along. And uh, by the way, you can go back and watch this over. And even if we have a glitch like last week where I have to re-upload it, you'll still get it back. So follow along, but you might want to watch first. So we can see those great. So you made one line down the grain line, and then you have 45 degree lines going the each other way. Right. So the, so the one thing... I would tell you so you don't get stuck. And I tried this on purpose to see how bad it was. It wasn't too bad, but it was kind of a pain. Um, make sure that all of your lines end up out here or here, like where there's an edge going inward. If you start making lines, like if you close something in and there's no easy way to get to it from the side, mm -hmm. you're going to have to go through like clipping it carefully. It's like painting yourself into a corner, kind of. And it just makes it more difficult. I'll show you on this other jacket where I did that. I wanted to try it once on purpose. I'm not doing that anymore. From now on, it's all the way from the edge, straight up, straight up, straight up. That's so, that's a great tip, though, because what you just said, if you put yourself in a corner, you're going to have a really bit of a mess trying to cut this up. Yeah, and you can do it. You can definitely do it. It's just going to be more difficult and time-consuming. And I found this really relaxing. Um, I just really enjoyed doing it. I think so, it's going to be great. So just uh, one quick question before you move on. Uh, so all, you, do you have to have everything cut on 45 degree angles? Do you always want it to be on the bias? Uh, if you want the best fray, um, I tried to do some circles. And whenever it came up to the actual grain line, it didn't fray as nicely. So you could kind of see where... Um, like if you do a squiggle like this, if you do a squiggle on the 45, it should be pretty good. 
Right. I just I just noticed doing um, straight lines against the grain line. It just really didn't want to fray as nicely. So test it. <laughs> Try it. Do a little bit first on fabric that you don't care about and see what it does. Um, I'll show you a couple things on this other jacket in a minute. Um, the other thing I do is I use a spray adhesive. And a lot of people don't like this, but if, if you're doing a large garment and you're taking it over to the sewing machine, you're going to be really glad that these layers are stuck together and they're not sloshing all over the place. So when I do a large garment, let me just show you one here that's in the process. Just uh, while you're doing that real quick, how many inches apart did you make your last lines? Half inch. Half inch. And do you pre-wash your fabric? No. Okay, thanks. Nope. So here's, here's a jacket back that is started. Oh, that's cool. So you see how the backing is much larger? And when I do something like this, I do pre-mark everything because I want to know where I'm going I don't really plan it ahead. I just start drawing the lines and then kind of look at it. The nice thing is if I don't like how the lines are, I can iron it, the lines go away, and then I can start again. So these were done with, um, I think a black marker, but that's all gonna come out. And then some of these lines, I changed my mind, so I make little X's through it so I know don't sew there. And you can see all of these lines, I can stick my scissors and cut up all of these lines, all of these. The other thing is when we start sewing, you always want to start on the outside, go all the way up, pivot, come across and down, cross and down, cross and down. If you ever have like a missed space up in here in the middle, start here, double back over it, and get that line. Don't start in the middle and go out because when you wash this fabric, those stitches that are not off the edge could come out. I have one of my samples where that happened. So um, you wanna that's make a, sure. That's yeah. a really good tip because I would just in my mind think start from the middle and go out. So you make sure everything lays right, but it makes sense to go up, pivot and around. <clears throat> well, also a big piece like this, I found my biggest kind of cross line maybe here. So I started here, went all the way down, pivot and come across. Down at the bottom, I come up and down. So I did do a few preliminary um, stitch lines just to kind of stick it together and then start to fill in. But you can usually just go, you know, across, across, you know, like that. But I love the design on that. Could you just hold that up just one second so the camera can get it? I don't know if everyone can see the top. And that is, can you bring it just a little closer to the camera there? There we go. They can see how it's almost like a V in the back. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So when I'm doing this, I lay it out on the table. <coughs> Pardon me. And I have my fabric ready to go. And I already, I've done my testing. This one, these are the test swatches. Oh, those are cute. So I know which order I want to do them in. And then I stack them up. And I draw my grain line. And then just start making my half inch little cuts. And these are all, um, they all have the spray adhesive. You want to make sure and protect your sewing surface. These are sticking together. I did them last night. <laughs> I see a couple questions on the cutting. Don't worry, she's going to get to that part. I'll so I'm not going to ruin it till she gets there. <laughs> so here's another one that is only drawn. This one isn't sewn yet. You know, I, by looking at it from here, it looks like it's sewn. Isn't that funny? I think it's just because of the color of the, the pen. And then here I made some mistakes. That's okay. Just cross it out so you don't sew. Can you see the little X's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That just reminds me, you know, like, oops, don't sew on that line. 
And don't worry if you're not getting it exactly perfect. This is going to be so fuzzy that you're never going to see, you know, if you got like a perfect V. I do recommend though, when you're doing like a V like this, to go ahead and sew that center line. Otherwise, this is just gonna be rounded off when it frays. So go ahead and sew that. Sew that center. And then when you cut it, cut all the way up to that line and stop. And up to that line and stop. And oh, like, well, I actually come up to this line, pivot with needle down and then continue. And I'll show you on a finished one how, you know, how that worked out. That makes sense. Um, so by the way, do you need to sew when you drew that grain line and do you need to actually sew on that grain line or is that just your marking? You just That's use it just as my reference point. So that answers your question there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it doesn't matter where you can put it up the middle or along the side. It's just to give you something to reference your 45 degree angle. That's all. A guide. So yeah. uh, by the way, that jacket that you had there, how many layers of fabric was in that jacket? Um, this one is, let me look here. So there's the backing and then there's there's only three layers in this one okay do you have a favorite number of how i th that came up quite a bit marianne was asking uh, okay. do you have a favorite number of how many fabrics um so far three or four has been really nice um this one this one is ready to go in the washer this is six layers I will not recommend this. <laughs> this this is a hooded Beautiful. jacket. It hasn't gone in the wash yet. Let me see if I can hold it out so you can see the back. Can you see the back? Oh, that's gorgeous. So you have little, are those little uh, like diamonds in there? Yeah, so I sewed the little diamonds and then sewed a half inch inside of the diamonds, like square and a square and a square. Um, oh those, my gosh. Were, those were really hard to open up. Um, some of them won't be open, like these corners of the triangles are going to stay not open. But I was just curious, but see how the slashes come right up to that seam. So you do have to have that stitched down, otherwise this will all get fuzzy. That There's looks... Another. You're making, one. I think we should have rephrased this show. It's not learning how to chenille, it's couture chenille. I mean, these <laughs> are gorgeous. And there's another one at the bottom. So this one has a hood. This is the cutest little jacket pattern. And it does have a hood. And it's real stiff. It's like trying to hold a mattress up. But um, <laughs> when you're so, when you're trying to put all these together, you sew the two sides of the hood together. And then you have to sew the hood to the back section and the front section. So here I've got six layers, six layers, six layers. Oh my gosh. So that's 18 layers for your needle to pound through all of that. So and, and um, it worked just fine. You didn't have any problems sewing through that? I did, no, I used a, a Dunham needle and I used the move it foot on the luminaire and it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, I did go back after I sewed it the first time I sewed, like assembled it. Then I went back and did like a zigzag all the way around it as well. Um, then, wow. I thought, see, can you see the zigzag? Probably not. It's kind of Let me bring this up close. Bring it up just a little bit higher. Um, no. Can't really see the zigzag, but we trust you. I can't reach any further. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I did a zigzag on it just to kind of hold everything in because I'm still handling it quite a bit. Um, and I, my plan was I thought I was going to put like a bias binding all the way around it. But I think, again, I don't know. I think I'm going to do a narrower zigzag, like a tighter zigzag all the way around and just wash it like that. I was just thinking that it would, it would fringe, kind of fringe up around the edges. I, everybody's talking about a hoodie. I'm wearing a hoodie today, but mine's a lot softer than yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, they soften up after you wash them then they get nice and floppy. But at this point, it's really difficult, like, you know, bunching it under the machine. So you have to have a nice open space have everything clear to go. Hey, before you get rid of that, Kim, 
Yeah. Uh, Linda would love to see the inside of that jacket if you can show. If you're oh, it's just <clears throat> it's black flannel. That's all. Oh, and it has lots of fuzz. Gorgeous. So just like a regular inside of a jacket. Yeah. The black flannel was actually the back layer of the chenilling. Nice. And I'll show you why I did this this way this time. Um, <laughs> because this is the finished one. Oh, my goodness. Look at how soft that is. Oh, look at the lines on that jacket. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that is like a work of art. Everybody's saying, oh, my goodness. So it's just flannel. And here's the hood. When you have the hood up and the sleeves. I'm just, I'm blown away. And I want everyone to just watch this really closely. Look at the difference in weight from the one when she started before she threw it in the wash. Cause I would look at that one that I sewed and I would, I would think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like a robot for Halloween. And right. that is beautiful. Now I have to say the one I showed you previously, that's six layers. This one is, let's see, one, two, this one's only four layers, but what happened to this one, um, I put the lining in before I washed it because I realized when I did a couple of the little clutches, um, if you wash it first, the edges are so puffy that you really can't sew two of them together, you know, to, to assemble. They're so thick. Okay. So it's easier to sew them together before you wash them. So on here... I did the lining and the lining fabric didn't shrink as much as the flannel did. Uh Oh yeah. So it's kind of baggy. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like the, the lining is very loose, but I made this one as a practice and like in the evening in the summertime, hopefully this summer we're going to have people come over and hang out with us. But in the evening it gets chilly. So I have like sweatshirts and sweaters and things like that that are easy to just throw in the wash. So when people come over, if they get chilly in the evening, I can just go, you know, bring out a basket full of jackets and sweaters. <laughs> okay, Kim, <laughs> I'm dying. Like I might have a basket full of uh, booties or slippers. <laughs> I would not, it would take me, I'm coming to your house. If you're putting out baskets of these jackets, I'm in. And I don't care if your lining is baggy, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Well, I figured, you know, for sitting around the fire, who cares, right? Absolutely. So, and it's nice and warm and the mosquitoes won't get you through it. But, um, so that's what that looks like. I kind of like the back of this one. I love the lines on that. So that's not even even. It's just, and you can now that you explained how you did it, you can see how you stitch in from the side and back out. Right. And it's just... It's just random. I was debating like on the hood where there's going to be a seam. Should I try to match those? And I decided not to. And then spontaneously, I mean, it kind of, it kind of did anyway. Wow. But, um, so I just, I'm just having the best time. So why don't we go over to the machine and you going to show us how to do this? Everyone's like, yeah. show us, show us. Yeah. So Lorraine, just real quick before you go over there, uh, Kim, would you then recommend, since that lining was baggy, just pre-wash your lining just to I make would. sure it matches everything else? I would. And generally when I'm quilting, it's my rule is I just pre-wash everything. It doesn't even come to my sewing area until it comes out of the dryer. But this fabric I have on a bolt since when I was teaching a long time ago, and it's just on a big bolt and I didn't think about it, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. But the, the flannel definitely shrunk <laughs> a lot more. Also, when you're, if you're going to do a um, chenille jacket or just some, make sure that it's a real simple pattern with no darts, you know, or fancy seams. You just want as few pieces as you can manage yeah. and make it bigger than what you need. Um, you see, when I laid this out, it's a lot bigger than the pattern piece. Right. So I, I traced my pattern. Um, I think I'm using on this one a medium. So I traced the medium size on my pattern onto like a pattern tracing material. 
and I saved that. But when I laid all this out, I laid the pattern, the pattern tracing material on top of all this and just cut around it real big. So once this is all sewn and I'm in a slit, then I'm going to lay the pattern back on here and pin it and then actually trim it to the actual size. So make Absolutely. sure you have plenty on there and make it a little bit bigger than you think. These patterns, like this pattern was made to be used with like a, a fleece, which wouldn't take up as much bulk. And I right. found that blue and green one, it's an extra, extra large, but it hardly fits because it it's puffy, you know. So, so bulky. That's a good tip. And, and a lot of people are asking, what pattern, what pattern? And she just told you, try to find one with no darts. You can see hers is more of a raglan sleeve style, not right. set in sleeve, just not real fitted. That's the whole thing. Think of a cozy sweater. Exactly. Just a nice, see, so you can see this. This is the front. Yeah. This was one pattern piece left and right. The back was one big piece. And then the hood was one piece doubled and then just flipped. So, um, yeah, just any pattern will really work. So, all um, right. So any pattern that's do this. Do you want to show us how to do this? Yeah. Are we going to go to the machine? Sure. Okay. I'll see you over there. All right. See you over there. So while she's headed to the machine, I'm reading all of your comments. I get the best part of this job. I, I'm so excited about this. And someone was just asking, how do you know how much it shrinks? Well, we'll ask him. But what I would recommend by watching this and what I've done with smaller projects, nothing like this is I always have a sample that's maybe say a four by four, mark that it's a four by four, throw it in the wash, bring it back, and then you'll know exactly how much it shrinks. That's just an old trick from other things. So uh, Kim is at her machine. Oops, let me make, let me unmute you. Sorry, Kim, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I just realized that I have a different thread on here. I'm just gonna put a different bobbin on. You know, while I was, while we were watching you here, I hear just a little echo. Sorry about that. Um, you could technically turn this into a reversible jacket if you wanted to. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? I mean, because you if you use decorative threads or maybe right? a decorative, um, I don't know, just a thread that looked really cool on the lining and put it inside out and then had the um, whatever you call it, <laughs> the flap. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is it Friday? Uh, the collar and the lapel opening up with all that chenille opening up. And oh, that would be yeah. so soft against the skin. I think that would be pretty awesome. It would be beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So can you see? We can see. We can see like just below your machine. Can you bring it up just a smidge? There, perfect. Better? Yep. Okay. So I have my, uh, I'm hearing some um, feedback. Let me just check. Um, are you all hearing an echo or are we good? They'll, leave, they'll let us know. Go ahead. Okay. I'm hearing an echo. It's better now. So I have my walking foot on. You can see the big foot. You can see where the, it's like a rubber tire here that feeds it through. Over here on this side, if you haven't used it yet. Hey, Kim, just real quick. Yes. The, the move it foot on or the walking foot on? The walk, the move it foot. Okay, great. I just wanted to clarify that because I know, because we've been talking a lot about the walking foot and I just want, it sure looks like the move it foot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. You're right. Move it foot. All right, keep going. So over here on the side, you can lift the foot up or down to get your fabric. That one with the six layers, I had to lift it up. Once I got it under, I could push it back down. So I'm gonna start over here. Start off the fabric. I'm gonna put the foot down. And I'm just gonna go. Okay, this one for this one, it's the first one. I'm going to make my big line, so I'm going to go all the way across to the next intersection.
I'm going to stop and pivot. Come around. Go off the edge. Pivot. Oops. Oops, too much bulk here. We can see that so well. And you see nothing's bunching up in front of the foot. Now I'll just, I just wanna to mention too, that here I have my lines drawn. So I didn't have to have the, the laser on, but if you're doing this, I'm sorry, that echo is really distracting. So if you're doing this without pre-drawn lines and you're just doing straight, 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 you can put on your um, laser, your guidelines, turn it on, go to the sub menu, and I have my needle to the far left position and I've moved the line over to 12.70, which is a half inch. So if I didn't have, if I didn't have the lines drawn on there, I could just use the laser. The other thing is on your screen, on your machine screen, along the very top, just to the left of the home button, there's a lock button. And I would recommend touching that. Um, what that does is lock your screen. Once you get everything lined up and set just the way you want it, lock your screen because as you're moving big bulky pieces of fabric, whether you're quilting or chenilling, if you don't lock that, you're gonna touch that screen and your stitch is gonna be different and you're gonna be real sad. <laughs> So just want to touch the screen. Okay, keep going. And here I'm going to double back over where I just sewed. Pivot. How are we doing? You're doing great. I actually Oops. just had myself muted, so that way if there is an echo, they won't oh. hear it. We've got three cameras on, so just you know, I'm just watching. Okay. By the way, you should all give her like a 10 times 10 plus because she is leaning over the camera and sewing and your lines are straight and we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nobody's getting seasick. So if you overshoot, don't worry about it. Just hit the backward button, back it up a stitch or two and go back forward. <clears throat> this is very forgiving.
I agree, Lois. Lois says, with all of those layers, I would, <laughs> I could see why you have them all stuck together. They would be all over the place. Oh, they would be, or pins. You'd be sticking yourself and, you know, have, have pinholes all over yourself. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Embroidered bags. This would be awesome. Okay, I'll just finish this one up. Oh, we're, we're having fun watching, and I'm reading everybody's comments, which is even Are you? Okay. Fun. I'll keep going. <laughs> Everybody wants to go play. So, you know, the coolest part of this, Kim, is there was somebody earlier, uh, from, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, what the name was, but um, she mentioned, hey, you know what? I'm kind of a slow learner. This looks really fun. This project could be it doesn't matter if you're advanced or beginner because it's so forgiving. Like she said, you're just basically stitching straight lines. How hard could that be? Well, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> and also, you don't have to start with a jacket. Do a do like a placemat or a scarf. Oh, a placemat would be adorable. That's and just rayon. A if you do rayon, rayon uh, cut on the bias really frays nicely. And that would make a nice infinity scarf. Hey Kim, are you using any special thread in, in the upper and in, in the bobbin? I'm just using bobbin thread. Like uh, embroidery thread? Yeah. Oh. Well, for this one, um, the black one I used regular thread, regular sewing thread. I can't remember now what I use. But right now I just have bobbin thread from embroidery in here. Nice. And Bobby, no, you don't have to backstitch at each one. I don't think you're not backstitching. Not when she gets to the end. She explained it earlier how she did that. Okay, so when I'm at a point in the middle here, I use the pivot function where the needle goes down, the foot comes up, you pivot your fabric, you hit the gas, and you keep sewing. Um, that way, there's no loose threads up here. There's no tie-offs. Um, when you get to the bottom, if you, like over here, I did have to go off because it was too close. So I came down here, cut the thread, moved back over here. You can tie it off at this point if you want, but this is all going to be cut off or in the seam allowance. So you, you don't really have to worry too much about that. I think out of all, that's one of the best tips I've ever heard is going around and pivoting and coming back out. Because when I've done it before, I've either just done straight lines. I've never done anything so beautiful as what you have there. And I would just think it'd be a nightmare to have to tie up all those threads. And I, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see this. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to stop now because I want to show you how to how cut it. Okay, let's go over to the other one. Okay, Angela? All right, while she's headed back over there, I can see all of your comments. So, Marianne, did you serge or zigzag the edges before you wash? I'll ask her that uh, if she did. I think Kim is back. Hey, Kim. Hey, by yes. any chance, did you uh, serge or zigzag the edges before you washed? Um, on the one that's finished, it was lined. Okay. And I also top stitched after I turned the jacket right side out, I top stitched all the way around the lining to make sure that all of those edges were kind of, you know, safe. Um, for the for the one that I haven't washed yet, I did zigzag it. I stitched it first and then zigzag it. But like we said earlier, I think I'm going to just zigzag it again a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. And leave it because I think those raw edges will be really cool. I agree. When they fray, I think it'll it'll kind of go with the jacket. So why would you waste time putting a binding on that? I think, True. and I and I would do the same for a placemat. Yeah. I think I'm going to try a placemat. In fact, that's yeah. been our evening thing is doing little picnics, and uh, I might have to do something cool like this. This is this is totally out of the box. <laughs> Yeah, I think it would be fun. And and if you spill barbecue sauce on it, you throw it in the washing machine. They get better when you wash them. So, 
Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just do a nice, even a decorative stitch, maybe a half inch or so away from the edges of your placemat. Mm -hmm. Use a pretty decorative stitch and then maybe that will show up too, kind of tucked into the, you know, into the chenille. Um, the other thing, the other thing too is whatever you're going to use on your top layer, stabilize that, put it in your hoop and embroider something on it. And then use like a tearaway stabilizer so you can rip away the rest of it, but not behind the embroidery. And then lay that on top, like as your top layer, stitch around the design, and then do all of your lines and your chenille. Oh, that would be and, gorgeous. I'm thinking quilt sashing would look really cool. Yes, yes. So, I mean, there's just a lot of different ideas that I haven't had time to do them yet. But <laughs> There's, everybody's given us more suggestions. We got a pillow. <laughs> You're going to yep. be so busy. <laughs> and a baby gift. I mean, really, if you get fabric, you you need only like three layers or four layers. And like Angela said too, have the bigger layer in the middle, which will make it easier to cut. And you'll see why in a second. Put two layers on top. Mm -hmm. two layers on the back side, stitch that all together, and then you just have to cut the top separate from the back side. You could have, that, that would be phenomenal. That really would be. And you could do that in an afternoon. And then I'm really getting fond of this idea of leaving the edges raw. I, I, I like that idea. I really yeah, like for, that. for a baby blanket, it'd be so soft and cuddly. Yeah. So how are we doing on time? Um, you got 10 minutes. Okay. So when I first started doing this, I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to go shopping and buy all this stuff, which I did. Um, and I bought a couple of different products. Uh, this one has a long nose on it, so it can go like slide in between your layers. And this one has four different sizes with a rotary cutter thing in the middle so that you can slide that up and cut these. To be honest, I struggled with both of them. I think it was user error, maybe. Um, I just had a really hard time getting it in there and getting it started. So it's my personal opinion. <laughs> if you have a pair of hedge trimming scissors that are super, super sharp, um, it's going to, it's going to be fine. I actually prefer using the scissors. So here's the reason the back is bigger. Otherwise you'd have to go like, you know, like this and try to get, so you're not cutting into your back. Here, I can lay my scissors against the back and just slide the blade up in there and just start cutting. And you don't have to cut perfectly. If you go off to one side a little bit, it's not a big deal because it's going to be so fluffy. And I generally just get a book on tape or something like that, put my headphones on and just start cutting. Can you, by the way, I'm just curious. I mean, you could cut, but I would be so tempted to, well, it depends on what scissors you're using, to just open that and just keeps ripping and ripping and ripping, but then you'd run the risk of ripping out the end, right? What do you mean? I would just put my scissors in and just glide it super fast because I'm always in such a big hurry. <laughs> but you're cutting well, through all, are you cutting through all the layers? Yes. Okay. Yes. That Well, that wouldn't work. If it was one layer, it would work, but not four or three or two. Right, no, and I'm with you. If I only had one layer, I'd be going all the way across. <laughs> and this is also why when you put your spray adhesive on, you don't want spray adhesive between your back layer and, um, you know, this base layer and the last layer because you can't get your scissors in. You end up having to, like, pick it apart. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Marion. <laughs> oh, gosh. That, oh, everybody say that would make a cute vest. It would. So now you can see I'm cutting right up to this line. And I did sew that line. And I'll show you why. On this jacket, here's that same line. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and if I didn't sew that and just went up and down and up and down, these would be like little rounded instead of pointy. And I really wanted the pointy. 
And I think it would also peel back so you would see more of the backing. So I wanted to keep it nice and sharp there. Every time you put, pull that jacket up, it, it looks more gorgeous each time. Thank you. So now, I mean, you see how fast it goes. It's just really, really quick. And just for fun, I use yellow thread on this one. Probably won't ever see it, but I, I was just curious. So if you're going to do it with scissors, make sure you have super sharp scissors. And also, don't forget to do one of your rows before you put it in the dryer. Can you see oh, no. what I missed? <laughs> Yeah. Now, by the way, I would have just looked at that and thought, hey, that's a cool design element. Just leave a couple closed and a couple open. Nobody knew that, that was, you did it by accident. Well, there, that's the thing is like, I have a rubber stamp that says, um, mistakes are opportunities in disguise. So I kind of like that. So that's when I thought about doing the little squares and leaving some that are, are going to stay you know, closed and some that are open, some that are just slit, not completely open. So, I mean, that's what these little pra practices are good for. You know, just try all your crazy ideas on fabric you don't care about, like the polka dots. I don't know if I would ever actually do this, but it was fun. I was curious. I think those are really cute. And um, I thought this was going to be a pot holder, but this is only one layer, so it's not going to be real, you know, kind to your hands but this was <laughs> this was just the back folded around to the front oh that's an easy way to finish the edges mm -hmm. so there's your little placemat you know and i really like i keep bringing the placemat up or little drink holders or something like that because for somebody who's just starting out and they're thinking oh my gosh this is i, I could never do all this to start with a small project how hard could that be it's a rectangle right if you exactly. screw it up it's a circle <laughs> exactly and now we have 4th of July coming up. You can do red, white, and blue um, placemats. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned that. I think uh, uh, Marsha has said red, white, and blue would be perfect. I actually maybe tried to do that for the weekend. I, I That's a oh, day away. I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> well, and the other thing, too, on, on this jacket, um, let's see, which one was it? Actually, they I had to cut. If you have to cut some pieces... Oh, here it is. See that inside the sleeve? Yeah. As long as you can piece your fabric together and change color. So this was all orange inside of here. But if I wanted to change from black to white, I could do that as long as it was on an inside layer and covered with something else over the top, you could actually change colors. And that's that's going to be a real fun experiment, too. That's Within a good the same idea you know, the same piece, do like white on top and put red on one side, blue on the other side, and then halfway through switch it or something. That's a great idea. Plus then you can work through your stash that you have and grab little pieces out of your stash, even if right. they don't match. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, there's just a lot of really fun ideas and I'm excited to start. I'm excited to finish these. And then I have one more jacket I want to do for my daughter. She wants one. Well, I want to come to your house and sit out at the campfire if you're handing those out. Forget the slippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would swallow you, Angela. I'm excited to see how this turquoise one looks when it comes out of the washer. Oh, you and have to share photos. You're going to have to come back on and share photos or just pop into one of my other live shows just to show the finished product because people are going to just, I can see everyone saying, I cannot wait to see. Uh, also, just off topic for one second, mm -hmm. uh, that quilt behind you, a yes. lot of people are talking about. <laughs> That was a class that I taught a long time ago. If you look up Inside Out Broken Quilts, um, I don't do it anymore. I could send that's, you the pattern, though, if you want to put it up. It's kind of lengthy. That's really cool. Well, we could do a blog post for that then. Why don't we plan uh, after Memorial Day? So for those of you wondering about we'll the quilt, I'll get with Kim uh, next week sometime. So don't, like, look tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, we'll do a blog post featuring her quilt. How's that? That's fine. Oh, so hey, what fabric did you use for your lining? Um, the lining on the on this one is just a cotton, quilter's cotton. This one 
is um, black flannel. And this one is just quilters cotton also. Okay. It's just whatever I had a lot of. So this one um, this is not going to be the lining. So I'm kind of Ooh. debating what to do with the inside of this one. That would make a great lining though. It would. And I, I have enough of it to line it with, but, and it is pre-washed this time. So um, did you hand dye it or did it come that way? It came that way. Isn't it pretty? But you could have. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And we, were, we, we used to have a, a group that came over like once every two weeks and we would dye just bolts and bolts of white fabric and we'd have all our buckets in the garage and um and my mom called and my children said oh my mom's in the garage with the dying ladies <laughs> so yeah oh gosh he was well, this been absolutely fantastic i i think you've grabbed out all the questions i mean you showed such a great tutorial of that and don't forget you can go back and watch this over if you're on facebook be sure to follow Brother Sews and Brother Crafting because Facebook is changing everything next week, just so you know. So follows, if you don't follow the page, you won't be reminded. It used to be likes, now it's follows. They change it all the time. And if you're on YouTube, click subscribe and you'll never miss a live video. And you can go back and binge watch hundreds of these. But this one, I'm reading the comments, a lot of people said they're going to go back and watch this. Absolutely gorgeous. So Kim, any last minute tips for someone that's getting ready to try this for the first time ever? Um, don't panic. Um, and test, always test. I'm a big advocate of test everything first. Um, I've used a half inch, but don't stick to that. You can make them narrower or wider. There's a lot of other tutorials that you can watch to do different things with it. Um, a lot of surface design includes different um, versions of chenilling. Um, this is kind of a basic, kind of get your feet wet. I would not call it today. basic, but it, it might be basic, but the look, the final product is amazing. So one last quick question. I think uh, she might've popped in late, but we'll go ahead and answer it now. Jenny wants to know, do you recommend pre-washing fabrics? So you could just give that one more quick thing. Yes on the lining, but explain the other fabric. Yeah, I did not wash the flannel. I don't think it would hurt to wash pre-wash it though. Um, I don't think it would hurt. I didn't only because the two jackets were gonna be all that same flannel. I bought it all at the same, it all was from the same company, so I wasn't concerned about it. Um, I did not pre-wash it. The one that I'm doing for my daughter, the white fab, the white flannel is pre-washed because I had it previously. The tan and the caramel colors, I bought new, so I will be pre-washing that because it's, you know, I don't want to mix pre-washed with not washed. Right. So um, if you're going to ever do two different kinds of fabric, I would definitely recommend pre-washing everything in hot water, hot dryer. If anything bad's going to happen to it, let it happen before you do all your hard work on it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Nothing bad is going to happen, but... <laughs> Just in case. Well, Kim, this is absolutely awesome. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Arnell, I wore purple for you today, by the way. Pulled this out of the closet. We've This week, Kim, I showed them how to design a hoodie, which I love your jacket. We're going to have to definitely look for a pattern for that. Um, but I found this purple jacket I made years ago, years and years. I'm going through my stash. Oh, nice. Yeah. I know. After COVID, I kind of like go through and got rid of <laughs> so many things. You ever noticed, Kim, during this whole time? I don't know about you, but uh, my closet used to be full of things that I would take for every trip. And now that jacket would be going with me everywhere that you just made. I'd bring that on every airplane as a little cozy to wear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It Everybody... might take up the whole seat. I don't know. <laughs> <It's pretty puffy. laughs> hey, that would be keep people away from you, right? <laughs> it would. You pull the hood over your head, just pull it down. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. I'm going to take a nap. Well, Kim, this is awesome. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Uh, brother? Brother? Thank you for letting the brand ambassadors and educators take over your page twice a week because we love it. We love sharing. And uh, I love the way you use the Move It Foot for that, by the way, Kim. It was, was awesome. Don't forget, if you have the Luminary, you have the Move It Foot or the Dream Machine with the Move It Foot, use it. We forget about it. And when you're doing, like I was doing some quilting also on another project. It's awesome. It's just, I love it. I love it. Thank you. And I will right, send pictures when these are done. 
Oh, good, good, good. We would love to see pictures. You're going to have to come back on and show that off. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And they're all going to have all weekend to try it. So don't forget about that. Fourth of July placemats. All right. That'll be our challenge. Did you hear that? Fourth of July placemats on the list. <laughs> Kim, thank you so much. And uh, for all of you, if you're going to be around tomorrow at 2 p.m., Emily's going to be on. I I just uh, cannot remember what she's doing, but I, it's always cute. <laughs> I was so distracted by the chenille, I can't tell you. But it's tomorrow at 2, which is a new thing. But it's only because we had to move Tuesday show. So I'll see you tomorrow at 2. Kim, I cannot wait to see photos. And we will put together a blog post with your uh, quilt behind you uh, in the next couple weeks or so. And I'll let everybody know when that's up so they can visit that. That's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Thanks, Angela. Bye. Bye.